You see, by the time you finish watching this video, the light leaving the galaxies we see today must have traveled about 350 million miles to reach us. But even though we have built our cosmological model based on observations and theories and mathematics supporting those theories, there are a few clues that the universe isn't completely adding up. You may have heard about the crisis in cosmology. Well, basically, the crisis originated when different methods of measuring the age of the universe started giving different results, and still do. And cosmologists have no idea why. The James Webb Telescope, with its recent images, has worsened the crisis even more. Many space channels make this look or sound complicated, but I will do my best to break this down as possible as I can. So here's a quick, I mean very quick, refresher. You see, the universe is expanding, and distant galaxies are moving farther away from us. When we calculate the rate of the expansion of the universe using the cosmic microwave background, this is what we get. Then there's another method, where we know how bright distant supernovas are supposed to be, and we can compare that to how bright they appear when we measure them. We can then use that information to estimate the expansion rate of the universe at the time of the supernova. When we calculate the expansion rate using this method, also called standard candles, this is what we get. So the expansion rate of the universe is called the Hubble constant. However, the difference between the result of the two methods is called the Hubble tension. And this, my friends, is the crisis in cosmology. But this is not the only crisis anymore. There is a new crisis in town, and it appears to be a distant cousin of the crisis in cosmology. And it is that cousin that we very much despise. I spent all my life developing a particular uh, theory of the universe, and now that theory is being questioned. I welcome that, because that's how we move forward. That's how we make progress in science. When we look up in the sky, given you are not in a city or a place obstructing starlight, you see countless stars. You also see the Andromeda galaxy as a smudge amidst the many stars. That's because the universe is filled with stars and galaxies. But the question is, how much of the universe do they fill? In other words, how much matter is actually there? A simple question, the answer to which is anything but simple. This dilemma exists largely because current cosmological observations simply disagree on how matter is distributed in the present-day universe. And this has given rise to the S8 tension, aka the cousin we do not like. Now, the S8 tension is a measure of the lumpiness or clustering of matter in the universe. To put it simply, picture the universe as this colossal puzzle, where the pieces are the matter scattered throughout space. Scientists want to understand how this matter is distributed and how it clumps together. There are two ways to measure it. First, by precisely calculating it by using low redshift observations, such as weak gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing is a phenomenon where the immense gravitational pull of massive objects like black holes and galaxies act as cosmic magnifying glasses bending and distorting the light from more distant objects that would otherwise be invisible, providing unique insights into the vast universe. However, the S8 value derived from the second method, which relies on the standard model of cosmology, grounded in cosmic microwave background measurements, diverges from values obtained through low redshift observations. This incongruity lies at the heart of the perplexing S8 tension. Clearly, there is an element that eludes our understanding, defying alignment despite numerous theories, observations, and the hypothetical entities supporting those theories. To unravel this mystery, astronomers turn to one of the world's most powerful supercomputers for the largest ever cosmological simulations. The magnitude of this project becomes apparent when considering that the simulations demanded over 50 million hours of computer time distributed across 30,000 processors comprising the supercomputer at Durham University in the UK. Dubbed Flamingo, 
The project, with its convoluted acronym denoting Full Hydro Large Scale Structure Simulations with All Sky Mapping for the Interpretation of Next Generation Observations, stands out not only for its immense size and high resolution, but also for its comprehensive approach. Distinct from previous simulations, primarily focused on modeling dark matter, Flamingo goes beyond gravity alone. While dark matter constitutes the majority of mass in the universe, ordinary baryonic matter, despite comprising only a fifth of the total mass, significantly influences how cosmic matter is distributed at smaller scales. Factors such as galactic winds, propelled by supermassive black holes and supernova explosions, can impede galaxy growth. Unlike earlier simulations that exclusively considered dark matter, Flamingo incorporates and tracks ordinary matter, recognizing that even though dark matter dominates gravity, the role of ordinary matter cannot be disregarded. Despite notable advancements, such as accurately depicting the formation of celestial bodies like the Milky Way and Andromeda Galaxy, Flamingo falls short of explaining the observed weak clumping of matter in the current day universe. In other words, it failed to resolve the very thing it was created to help solve the S8 tension. Or might I say that the Flamingo simulations indicate that something is terribly wrong with our cherished standard model of cosmology. The simulation also contradicts the observations of the James Webb Space Telescope and other observatories about the distribution of matter in the universe. The current theory beautifully explains how galaxies evolved, but there's a problem. It predicts that they're 7% more closely clustered together than they actually are. The new computer simulation is much more detailed, and it takes into account the role of supermassive black holes. But that's not right either. It's still 5% more clumpy. Now, I don't know about you, but this is great for science, because now we know that we are headed somewhere, and our cosmological model needs some major revisions. And that's how science works. There is a major shift about to come and it is already on the horizon. That's what I feel. What do you think? Drop in your comments below. Also, channel membership is now live. Please help me buy a cup of coffee if you enjoy my content. Until next time.